All right, so today I want to talk to you about chi-squared goodness and fit test. Uh, the symbol for this in the calculator is x squared or chi-squared, G-O-F, GOF. Um, just to refresh your memory about what chi-squared is in the first place, uh, it is an independence test to see if the two variables, uh, whatever your two variables are, if they are independent of each other. Um, just to refresh your memory, also degrees of freedom is equal to the row minus one times the column minus one. Um, so you're going to take your observed values, you're going to put it in a matrix, um, and then you're going to do a chi-squared two-way test on the matrix. And remember that we are going to reject our null hypothesis if two cases happen, right? If the p-value is less than the level of significance, uh, if you're okay with it, I'm going to put level sig, or if your chi-squared is greater than the critical value. Okay, if it's greater than the critical value, those uh, that's how you know if you're going to reject the null. Um, and you're going to check to see if two things are independent, and that is the chi-squared test. Today we're going to do a chi-squared goodness of fit test. And basically what this is doing is it tells to see, it's a test to see if um, what's happening follows as what it's supposed to happen. Okay, so we're going to do an example and this will become a little bit more clear. Um, so basically, you have two situations again. Uh, so there's a null hypothesis, which data satisfies a uniform distribution or follows like, let's just say it's manufacturer specifications. Um, so you're going to go ahead and say that that is the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis is that the data does not satisfy any uniform dis distribution, which the product, like if it's M&Ms or Skittles, is not according to manufacturer specifications, okay? Um, and like I said, this will become a lot clearer once we go through an actual problem. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to put in the data for observed and expected frequency into a list. So since we're using the TI-84s, you go to stat, you go to edit, you put your numbers in under L1 and L L2, you calculate the degree of freedom, and then you do a chi-squared goodness of fit test. So that's under stat, tests, goodness of fit. Uh, this is very important. Please memorize this. So we're going to reject if the p-value is less than the significance level and um, or if the chi-squared is greater than the critical value. So depending on which uh, statistic they give you, significance level or critical value, you have two different things or two different tests. All right. So this is an example. Lego sells a box of assorted bricks. And they should have, right, should have the following distribution. So percentage-wise, 20% should be white, 30% should be blue, 10% should be green, 10 yellow, 20% should be black, and 10% should be red. So you open a box of 500 pieces, and you see the following. You see 82 white, and so on and so forth. So we're going to complete the table of expected frequencies. And the way we do that is, if we take a look at this question, uh, there is 500, and technically what there should be is there should be 20 white. So 500 times, this is a percentage, so 0.20. So 500 times 0.20 is equal to 100. Um, okay, so that's 20% green. Uh, we'll get there in a second. Black is also the same thing. That is also supposed to be 20%. So I'm going to go over here, go to black, and also put 100 in. Why is my screen jumping? Um, put 100 there. Um, and if I look over here, our blue is 30%. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. All right. So for green is, this is going to be 500 times 0.10, um, but we know that 500 times 0.20 is 100, so this is going to be half of that, so that's going to be 50. That's going to be 50 because it's the same, and red is also going to be 50. And the final one right here is for 30%. We're going to take our 10% and multiply by 3, so 50 times 3 is equal to 150. Or if you just wanted to do 500 times 0.3, uh, and then 500 times 0.10, so on and so forth, okay? So you can figure out that. 
All right, so now we're going to carry out a chi-squared goodness of fit at the 10% level of significance. So since we're talking about 10%, uh, since we're talking about level of significance, we are going to reject the null, right? Reject the null if the P is less than the level of significance. Level of significance. Okay, so what is the null hypothesis? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what is the null hypothesis. All right. So the null hypothesis is that, uh, so this is H sub zero, is that the, the data follows manufacturers specification specs. Okay. So that's the null, finding the degrees of freedom. Uh, remember that that is the number of categories that we have, which is going to be five, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is going to be six minus one. So degrees of freedom is equal to n minus one. So the, there are six categories. So six minus one is equal to five. So the degrees of freedom is five. To find the p-value, what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, stat. So go to stat, go to edit. Uh, we're going to put our numbers in. So I went ahead and I put what is it that was observed first. So I put these numbers right here. Uh, so these numbers went under L1, 82, 91, 40, 91, 20, and 77. Please pause the video and put this into your calculator now. And under L2, I put these numbers right here, 100, 150, 50, 50, 150, okay? So please, like I said, pause the video and make sure that you do this yourself. And then now we want to go ahead and go to stat again, go over to test. And we want to do chi-squared goth test. So we want to hit enter, enter. Make sure your degrees of freedom is correct. So 6 minus 1 is 5, so that's good. And we want to have this calculate, okay? So since we're talking about level of significance, we don't need the chi-squared test. We don't need the chi-squared value, the 79 point whatever. Uh, we want the p-value of 1.341024. Uh, e just means times 10 to the negative 15, okay? So let me just go back over here and write this down. So our p-value is equal to 1.34 times 10 to the negative 15. That's our p-value. Let's just make sure that that's correct. Okay, good. Um, so what decisions can we make now, right? So we're going to go ahead and we are going to reject the null if the p-value is less than the level of significance, which is 0.10. So is 1.34 times 10 to the negative 15 uh, is that less than 0.10? And the answer is yes. So we are going to reject the null. So, which means that the data does not, uh, follows manufacturer specifications. All right, we're going to. So remember, we are rejecting this, so the data does not, does not follow manufacturer specifications, right? So that is the conclusion that we can make. All right, so we're going to go ahead and try a couple of actual IB questions about this. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and read through this problem. All right, so hopefully you read through the problem. Uh, so key things to kind of take note here is according to his model, customers visiting the store are supposed to be evenly distributed across the six operating days of the week. Okay. So if, um, we take a look at this, it says step one, they gave us, they actually were kind enough to give us the null hypothesis and the alternate. So it says determine the expected number of visitors, which we definitely need. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to total this up. So when you add up 134, 146, so on and so forth, you're going to get that the total number is 804. Uh, so for the expected frequency, what we're going to do is it's supposed to be uh, evenly distributed across the six days. So it's supposed to be 804 
times one sixth. Uh, and so when you do that, you're going to get 134. So it's supposed to be 134 across the board, 134. And you could tell uh, based off of the chart or the table that those are not the values that we have. So the number of degrees of freedom, again, is going to be the number of categories minus one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So the degrees of freedom is going to be six minus one, which is equal to five. And we are asked to find the expected, uh, the conclusion for the test. So we're gonna take this and plug it into our calculator. All right, so I just went ahead and plugged these numbers into my calculator. So I did my observed first, uh, which is right here. And then I went ahead and did my expected, which is 134, 134 all the way down. Um, and then I saw that my p-value is 0.151, so p is equal to 0.151, and we can see that that p-value uh, is, we have to compare it to our 0.05, so our p-value is actually greater than our 0.05, which means that we do not reject, do not reject the null hypothesis, uh, which means that we're basically accepting our alternate hypothesis, which means that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the data does not follow the model, okay? So there is sufficient evidence to conclude that the data does not follow the model. The data does not follow the model. All right, that's our first question. Next. So here we have a manufacturing company, a factory has computer chips. The engineer records the number of uh, defectives from each conveyor belt on a particular day. Here are the results. Okay, so the engineer conducts a chi-squared goodness of fit test at the 1% level of significance. Okay, so 1%. Uh, so that's going to be 0 0.01 to form a conclusion. So we have, again, our null and our alternate. Uh, estimate the expected number of defectives, right? So if we go ahead and take these numbers that we have here and we just add them up, that is going to give us 57 plus 32 plus 48 plus 55 plus 73 is going to equal 265. So that's the total number. And then uh, the number of defectives are evenly distributed among the conveyor belts, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, what we have to do is do 265 times one fifth. And that is going to give us 53. Uh, so that is how much is supposed to be expected. 53 all the way down, 53, 53, and 53. Um, so degrees of freedom again, one, two, three, four, five. So five minus one is equal to four. So there are four degrees of freedom. I'm going to go ahead and pause it while I enter this into my calculator. All right. So I went ahead and plugged it into my calculator and I got that my P is 0 0.00219. So P is equal to 0 0.00219. Uh, and compared to the 0 .01, 0 0.01, I can see that this number right here is going to be less than my level of significance, so which means that I am going to reject my null. So reject the null hypothesis. And so what that means is my conclusion of the test is that there is sufficient evidence to conclude that there is a difference in the proportion of defectives produced from the five conveyor belts, right? So it says we're going to reject the null, which means that this right here, the proportion of defectives produced from the conveyor belts are not the same, is going to be what we can conclude from this test. So we can accept our alternate. So the proportion of defectives from the conveyor belts are not the same. All right, and 
and our last problem. So we have a scenario where they're selling candies. Uh, each of them contain a collectible sticker, fine, featuring a famous mathematician. So this is how much is expected to be. Um, so a staff member buys 140. So there's a total of 140. So this is supposed Euler, Euler, Euler. It's supposed to have 50%. Uh, so 50%, so 140 times 0.5 is equal to 70. So this is supposed to be 70. Uh, 140 times 0.2 is going to give us 28. So this is how much is supposed to be expected for Pythagoras. Uh, Lagrange is supposed to have 21, right? Because 140 times 0.15. Uh, Laplace is supposed to have uh, 140 times 0.1, which is going to give us 14. And finally, uh, the last person is supposed to be 140 times 0 0.05, which is going to be 7. Okay, so this is the expected values right here. Uh, this is how much actually uh, happened or was found in the basket of candy. So there were 72. Uh, which is expected to be 70, right? So these are what's observed. These are my observed values. Um, so we're going to go ahead, take this, and plug this into the calculator, and then we can talk about the rest of the problem. All right, so for the first part of the question, it tells us to write down the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that uh, the data follows manufacturer specifications. Uh, degrees of freedom, again, is categories minus 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 1. So degrees of freedom is equal to 4. Uh, and then it says complete the table of expected frequencies. So we just did that already. We have 70, 28, 21. So 70, 28, 21, 14, and 7 is what the expected values are. Uh, calculate the p-value. So I went ahead and in stat right here, I put in what my observed was, which are these numbers right here. And then I put my expected, which are these numbers right here. Um, and then I went ahead and found out my p-value by doing stat, going over to tests, go to chi-squared goodness of fit, is this right here hit enter enter remember to change your degrees of freedom to four and again you should be doing this by yourself so our p is 0.958 so p is 0.958 oh i put that in the wrong spot p is 0.958 and then it says state the conclusion of the test right so since uh, let's look and see. This is a 5% level of significance. So our p-value, which is 0.958, is greater than our 0 0.05, which means that we do not reject the null. Do not reject the null. Um, therefore, we can conclude that the stickers are distributed as claimed by the, it's a claim of the canteen. So we can say that uh, the stickers, therefore, the stickers are distributed Right, we are accepting our null hypothesis so that the data follows manufacturer specifications. Uh, distributed as claimed by the canteen. All right, uh, forgive my handwriting, but uh, good job.